Hello and welcome to episode 162 of the GameSpot After Dark podcast. I am your host, Tomo Hussain, joined in the San Francisco studio by the one and only maestro of live streaming tech, Sean Luke Saifke. Hello, how's it going? It's going well, and we are joined remotely by newly upgraded Jake Decker. Uh, in two ways. I got faster internet, and I got my Steam Deck today, like 45 minutes ago. Incredible Ooh. scenes. And we are joined also remotely by the one and only Philbin Ben Janker. Hello. How's it going? Uh, I also got new internet, but it was like two weeks ago. So it's what exciting, I guess. Hit us with some info. What the specs? Uh, for, the, for the internet? Oh, it's it's like 10, 10 gigabit like nonsense like business class, it's stupid. Wow. Things go so fast. Holy moly. And well, yeah. if there's anyone at GameSpot that needs it, it's, it's ben. probably Ben. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He basically upload every video on on the site, so it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. For sure. All right. It's been an interesting week in the world of video games. Oh, you can say that again. Uh, TGS <laughs> Jesus is Christ. Um, there's been various events, um, on the sadder side, multiple outlets have been going through layoffs, yeah. ranging from Future to G4 to sadly Fanbyte recently. So I guess at the top of the show, if you're watching this live or listening to it later, it's worth just reaching out to people who you may know there, mm -hmm. working there and just showing them some love. They could definitely use it right now. Yeah. Um, it's a wild old time. It isn't easy covering video games. It might from the outside seem like, oh, it's all fun and, and a good time over there. And it can be. But we also at the whims of corporations that frequently don't understand what we do, why we do it, or how to m let us do it right. And they set unrealistic expectations. And then when we naturally can't meet them, we suffer the consequences. So, yeah, it's it's tricky to be in the world of games journalism and it becomes even trickier by the day. So, like we said, show the people that do the work that you like or enjoy some love, whether that's here or any of the aforementioned publications that um, have been going through layoffs. Um, with that said, we're going to do our best to keep things moving, um, keep things as light as we can and discuss some of the news. But before we get into that, Let's talk about some of the things that we've been playing, experiencing. Ooh. And I'm going to start with Ben. Oh, I bet you know where I'm going to go first. Oh. It's uh, everyone's <laughs> favorite time to up. I've been playing Final Fantasy 14. It's a thing that never stops. Um, <laughs> but uh, I guess most recently, I can, I can keep it short, I promise. Mm. Uh, they put out the, the newest raid tier, and uh, we've actually we had to reform our, our static group a bit. For, for running it. And we've actually got uh, everyone's favorite other Ziv uh, sympathizer, uh, Michael Hyam, in our group. Oh. So he's running with us. We're, we're, we're all working together to get through the current raid tier. And it's a very good time. Uh, so yeah, that and they had the patch with the most recent story that came out, Island Sanctuary, so you can Animal Crossing, all the things. And oh. it's, uh, it's real cool. Yeah, you get a motorcycle for planning things and clearing out an island. I um, wish that's how it worked in real life. <laughs> for real, it'd be a, a real good time. Jake, are um, you are you are you still trying to get uh, caught up, or have you have you given up? I, I I I wouldn't say I've given up, but I've definitely put it on the back burner. Not so much because I've lost interest, but more because of just game after game I've been covering. Last of uh, you know, Last of Us was all last week. I mean. I don't know. It, it, it's been busy, but I am itching to get back to it. I still have a ways to go to get to any of that stuff, though. I think I'm, I think I'm like two thirds through Heaven's Word. I'm like level 57, and I think it maxes at 60. I'm sure there's more to do after that, but. Hmm. Yeah. Sean Luke, where, so, are you, where are you at with Ziv? Oh, I'm, um, I think I'm like right at the end of uh, Realm Reborn. Um, mm. I didn't skip it like a coward. Um, I, I chose <laughs> to, to struggle through it. Um, but yeah, I uh, admittedly have not had the time or motivation to get through that like last little chunk yeah. I need to before I get to the good stuff. Here's the thing, Ben, you're the perfect person to answer this. Is yeah. there a Varty video for Final Fantasy uh, Ziv 14? 
I don't so know that, if I could point at one specifically. So can, yeah, or like a good video that you know of that is like, oh, you can just get every bit of story information you need from Real Reborn by watching this, you know, oh, yeah. at most hour long video. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm allowing. Um, yeah, there, there are very good breakdowns for specific uh, expansions if you want to just kind of go for that. Uh, you do lose a little bit of the, the like feel for it. It, it is paced in a, a way, but... You could definitely find a video that would give you a good overview. Okay. Keep in mind in. that I've played all the way up to the end of A Realm Reborn twice before having my characters. Like, <laughs> it's true. Just eaten <laughs> you, by the You've body. had a, a very rough run of it, uh, yeah. specifically. Uh, so I, I totally understand. There's definitely uh, a video, especially since you've played through it already. You'll be like, oh, I already know all this. Yeah, yeah, this makes yeah. sense. And it'll keep you going. Yeah, that's, that's what I think I'm going to have to resort to at this point. Just go... And watch a recap, and then jump in, jump into like, what is it, Heaven's Word next? Yeah, Heaven's Word, yeah, and, yeah. and you get to learn about the housing crisis and uh, people wanting to do all sorts of things to dragons. He mm. Heaven's Word picks up a lot, uh, I, I thought for the story, and it seems like everyone kind of feels that way because I, I did do most of A Realm Reborn as well. Like I was well over halfway through it, and then I slowed down because they were gonna cut some missions and quests in, in that update a couple years ago, but I stopped there, and I then I tried starting over again, and I had like done the first 30 hours of that game twice, so I was, uh, I was like, I, I, I can't do it again, but then I did find some videos I watched to catch me up on things that happened, Mo like catch up on like the last 10%, and then remind me of what happened in A Realm Reborn, and, uh, not a lot happened in a realm reborn, at least for most of it. <laughs> yeah, it, it does a lot of kind of like, oh, there are these people. They cried too hard. No monster showed up and you went and fought the monster. It's pretty cool. Anyway, we're going to do that three more times. Yeah, it uh, does introduce some important yeah. characters, though, and, and, and sets up cool moments eventually. And I feel like I'm going to miss out on some of that because I didn't get the full experience, but I'm not regretting skipping yet. So hmm, interesting. I think I think I'm gonna jump in it soon and use the old uh, watch the video. I think I'm gonna watch a video, see if you have one, Ben. Recommend it, and then I'm gonna you, yeah. I'm gonna and then I'm gonna reinstall, do the skip, and start playing Heaven's Word. I think that's the way Take to care. go for me. That's my that's my path forward. Mm. Just send me the I'm name of. Um, we can play together. Yeah, yeah I was send say, me the name of where I need to be. Got a, a four person group right here. We can run all the dungeons oh, right yeah. with what we got. <laughs> And and I'm a tank, and people don't like playing as tanks, so that's taken care of. There you go. Although uh, you're a tank too, right, Ben? I I'm a tank, but I also have, have almost everything, everything yeah. leveled up. I can I can <laughs> heal, I can DPS, I can. It's it's all good. Uh, what else have you been playing? Uh, a lot of fighting games, as it turns out, because they fit in really well into a a, a busy work schedule slash MMO schedule. So I've been doing. Uh, Specifically, a lot of Guilty Gear Strive with uh, some of my friends, uh, which has been a really good time to kind of get back into that. It's a fantastic fighting game with a mm -hmm. great soundtrack and excellent characters. And uh, uh, the most recent uh, addition, uh, Bridget's fantastic. Mm. Mm. Um, very, very big fan. But I'm still still playing my, my usual bike and soul bad guy and Faust characters. But... Um, Along with that, doing a lot of Street Fighter V because I'm excited for six, mm. which I'm sure we'll talk about later on too. So mm. I'm very excited for that. Um, and the other kind of surprise one that's kind of like a cool relaxed deal is uh, playing a lot of the, the JoJo fighting game remake that came oh, out. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I think they did a fantastic job with it. It's still not got the best net code, but uh, if you want to play a cool fighting game that is pretty accessible and also still has a bit of depth, but also is really ready to throw fan service at you it's a very good time mm. i feel like as the host of a jojo podcast i should play this game although it, it will probably be hella spoilery i uh, well i i know jojo pretty well oh okay like, so for you yeah yeah so there's yeah. like i've never watched every episode start to finish gotcha but i've always yeah. kept up to date with jojo okay okay yeah so. as, as fun as it would be it would sadly not make a great quick look to have like Lucy and Jeff play yeah. because uh, that as it cool as that would be, they would be hella spoilery. I mean, I'm like hesitant to play it because I know like part seven characters are in it and I'm like, yeah. I haven't yeah. read that one yet. Don't, I don't want to get spoiled. Yeah. Uh, I, I still, I'm still like, I think I'm halfway through part five. 
I need mm. to I need to pick that up and, and get into the, the new stuff that also just kind of like kicked off. But uh, yeah. you can also kind of like it splits up the roster a bit so you can kind of yeah. like keep to the stuff, you know, if you want. But yeah, um, ben, it's very you, cool. Do you listen to Jeff Jeff's Bizarre Adventure? Uh, not as much as I'd like to. I want to listen to the first couple ones. Fake fan. Wow. Oh, jeez. I've been called out. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but yeah, but I yeah. think I want to try that. I Heck yeah, do it. Uh, if you if you get it for PC, I'd be down to to play with you too. Okay, I'll let you know. I think actually yeah. I might I might actually have the special edition. Oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I might I, I just don't know what version I've got, so I need to unbox that and have a look at it. They they were like they sent they were like, do you want this uh, JoJo special edition? I was like, I feel like if I say no, I'm committing career yeah. suicide at this point. Um. So yeah, they sent me one, which is fine. Um. But yeah, uh, Street Fighter Five. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, uh, I, I think that game's come a really long way mm-hmm. uh, from when it first came out. Uh, it, it's it's I really like I think my my favorite thing I'm realizing like beyond character fixes and balances and characters they've added is I really like how kind of weird experiments they got with uh, character gameplay design and also like the weird extra flourish animations they yeah. added to a lot of characters. So like you'll have uh what is it g the 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 weird definitely not q uh president of earth or whatever and if you like if you do a grab with him he'll do the grab but then he'll also like stand up and straighten his tie and like point at the crowd really quick if you let the animation play out and i think that's real neat to kind of yeah. have uh and then i'll also think about like gameplay wise you got like for instance cody who is from a beat-em-up game and they gave him like a beat-em-up style of gameplay where you you get an auto combo on pressing X over and over, and you can modify that with pressing different buttons. And it's it's neat that they kind of went and did that kind of stuff. It's it's fun, but it it is literally it, it's literally just holding me over until I can finally play six. Because yeah. six, I, I'm watching videos over and over again. Mm. Uh, I, I I I I want I want to try it so badly. Mm. <laughs> I'm I'm definitely gonna give six a fair shot. As someone who has dabbled in fighting games for. a for a while apart from smash i i feel like six seems like a good one to good one to try to get into i think john luke you had mentioned doing that too so maybe we'll, we'll start yeah, a, yeah. Uh, oh, fight club uh, sf6 fight boot club. camp yeah i would love to yeah i mean i i remember when five came out and i said oh, i'll make five my my like the one that i really try and make it like a because i play fighting games but i've never made an earnest effort in like specifically the online and stuff and i was like five will be the one and then five came out and i was like Nah, this ain't it. Um, yeah. I know that game eventually got there, but when it launched, I was like, <laughs> Five was busted online for a really long yeah, time. Yeah, and it just, I, I couldn't really stick with it. And I, was I, like, I have not played, I reviewed it. I reviewed Arcade Edition first. Mm-hmm. Peter Brown did the original, gave it a seven. I reviewed Arcade Edition, and I don't think I've touched it since that day. That was since when they that. added Sakura? Yeah, they had like a bunch of new characters. I think that second uh, V trigger whatever it's called mm-hmm. um, yeah everyone got it yeah, yeah everyone I, rem- got I remember that. that and then i was like okay that's enough for some reason whenever i review fighting games after i've finished reviewing it i'm just done <laughs> like i very rarely will go back to it there's something about the review process of fighting game that kills the most interest in it for me like i reviewed soul caliber the latest one just never play that again literally never touched it again and that's then, interesting because that's like right before the online really kicks into full exactly, gear. Exactly, but I think it's like the stress of it all. Oh, sure. Yeah, and then Grand Blue Fantasy was the same where I reviewed it and I, I was like, this is good, it's fine. And I was never touch it again. Mm-hmm. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, reviewed that, didn't touch it again. It died. <laughs> <laughs> it, it killed itself. Yeah. There is such a commitment with fighting games, right? Like, yeah. And, and, and it's tough. Like, I got really good at Smash Bros., during my time off at GameSpot because I didn't have to play anything unless I wanted to. So I just mostly played Smash Bros. And I think I got a lot yeah. better, although I haven't played in a while, so I'm probably not good anymore. But uh, th- that's kind of my main concern with trying to get into SF6 is that I know I'm sure out of the gate I'll be into it and, and I'll hold strong, mm-hmm. but then, you know, an- another game will release and I'll have to drop right, it and right. I probably won't come back. Uh, but we'll see. I mean... It looks really solid. I'm super interested in the um, the how that single player is gonna pan out because 
I don't know, walking around the city doing quests and street fights. I mean, so, we could just uh, get into what they showed this morning at the Capcom oh, yeah. thing. I'm, like, I'm very much down if the, we want to jump There's like that. a character creator that looks yeah. crazy. And the, they're like, we borrowed this from other video games that we are making. Yeah. Which I was like, oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah, like uh, just everything about that has way more effort than it should but in like the best way possible. <laughs> yeah, it's like they they remember the criticism of Street Fighter Five where it came out, where it was like very bare bones yeah. and it was like kind of a thin experience and they were like, let's do the complete opposite of that and stuff this thing full of everything. I'm also need. glad they didn't go for the like cutscene based story mode that a lot of fighting games do because it's like that's what was really popular about Mortal Kombat yeah and I think Mortal Kombat does it really well Street Fighter added one in afterwards wasn't very good no, and I think not. I don't think any other fighting game has really like been able to live up to like Nether Realms and what they do so yeah. going in a completely different direction where it's like screw that we're just gonna make like this weird open world thing is like way more interesting to me yeah so it's, it remains to be seen how how it kind of all comes together but i like the idea of that open world mm -hmm. um i still suspect that there we haven't seen the full extent of that open world oh sure because it's called world tour and we've just seen one city mm -hmm. and yeah. the world tour mode is from street fighter alpha or zero three where it was like they called it world tour in that and you traveled around the world and it's mm. a full rpg experience where you mm. had a character you'd level it up you'd give them new moves and all that kind of business <laughs> and i remember when i did the interview with them at um summer games fest i was like so you call this world tour there was another world tour mode is it going to be the same and they all just like nervously looked at each other like <laughs> and i was like okay i see what's happening or yeah. maybe like over time they'll add yeah. more to it <laughs> yeah that'd I be cool like, I would love for them to have that kind of like use that as their games as a platform element where it's like, yeah. hey, time to go to Brazil and beat up Blanca. And it seems like there's more than just, oh, you walk around the city and fight people. Like they were showing like, hey, you can uh, uh, spinning bird kick to like platform from yeah. this one building to so another in like the dumbest way yeah. possible. And I was like, yes. <laughs> I, I am like, I bet you there's going to be like dialogue stuff as well. I guarantee you're going to be like talking to people <laughs> and being like choosing dialogue options and shit like that. I, I need just like full Yakuza side story where like some kid is like, oh, my copy of, yeah. you know, I don't know. Street Mega Fighter Man 2. got Yeah, Street Fighter 2 got stolen and then go get it back. And then you have to just like beat up a bunch of dudes for yeah. it. And there's like weird. Ah. They could yes. have so oh. much cool fun with that. Like, oh, there's a uh, there's a, a, a reporter who's covered wars around here looking for. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> yeah, that'd be just pretty like, good. Like meet up with Frank West somewhere, and you know, sure, that would be so. Uh, fun. Or like, like a lot. good good way to get some uh, like side characters from like Final Fight or something. Yeah, exactly. In, like, I mean, know. like they are canon as well, so. Um, yeah, exactly. Well, I think ha there is a Hagger statue in, in one of the trailers. So mm -hmm. he's knocking about somewhere. Yeah, and they show like a, a poison looking figure in Imagine the background if they, of stages. This and is stuff. the most ridiculous idea. Imagine if they built it so events resulted in character reveals. Like, imagine if they had an event where it was like, we need to bust someone out of prison. And it's like an event that everyone does together. <laughs> and then you go there and you bust out Cody from prison. <laughs> and then, and then he's, now he's a playable he's character. Now, and now Cody joins the thing. <laughs> that would be so cool. Or like we need to find, or like uh, we've learned that there's a special master who can help you improve your Hadouken. And you like go to the mountains and find Oro there. And you're like, <sighs> that would be so good. Capcom, please. <laughs> That's that'd what be, I want That would be really it. good. Um, but yeah, so um, I have played Street Fighter Five before. Um, yeah, during Summer Games Fest. During Summer Games Fest. And Street Fighter yeah, Six. Uh, Street Fighter Six. Sorry, Four. I was thinking about Four the other day. Yeah, <laughs> Four's pretty good. Um, I, I have played uh, Street Fighter Six previously, and I was talking about this to you, Jean Luc, the other day, uh, where I was like, you know, when you can f yes. feel a game is gonna bang. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, that is every time I played that game, and I'm I feel like. This is this is good. I Even just watching tell. it, yeah. I'm like watching the trailer. I'm like, yeah, this is this is it. This is gonna be. This good. is gonna be good. Yeah. You can just you can just feel it. Yeah. Feel I the mean, energy. There's, there's still plenty of room for upset, and it could turn out like it's dog shit. But like every time I play, I'm like, I need more of this. This feels good. It's kind of like and that very like when I when I played five early stages, I, I was like, this feels slightly off. Yeah. There's something weird about mm -hmm. this. And then it came out and it was like, okay, there's a lot a lot of weird stuff happening with this. But yeah. when I played this one, I'm like, all right, 
I'm in. I'm excited. I have got an arcade stick on the way. <laughs> like, I'm pre-prepping for this. Yeah. So. And pretty much everyone who's played it has, like, said the same thing. Like, yeah, they all exactly. feel very good about it. So yeah. I, I'm, It's a more confidently delivered already, like, Street Fighter. Or, like, they... they and also, like, the beats around it as well. Mm. Like, they, they are... In terms of how they're marketing it, is like what they know what they're doing. Like it's clear they're like I'm doing commentator announcements. Like they did TGS and they announced two new commentators. One of which is a uh, a commentator that commentates on sumo fights, which is great, which is amazing. He's also the front man. He was of the front man of a um, uh, metal band. His name is Damon Kaka, and and like which is and he's a voice actor and an actor. And so like they're doing some weird stuff with it. Yeah, um, I would love them to do like. Uh, introduce new commentators in the future like yeah hit up I don't know who is Kenny Omega or something like that and just be like because Kenny Omega and I guess Xavier Woods they love Street Fighter <laughs> yeah um, kind of like how a, was it like Dota 2 used to have like the different announcer packs yeah, you could yeah, get yeah, like, get like, announcer <laughs> packs hit up Lupe Fiasco he loves it mm-hmm. um, get him in um, yeah so that is a very very cool I'm excited to play more yeah I just mentioned Lupe Fiasco And it reminded me that I am going to see Lupe Fiasco this month. And then it further reminded me that I might not be able to go see Lupe Fiasco this month. Oh, no. I need to double check my dates. And if so, I need to hit up Tim Gettys and be like, Tim, I'm sorry. No. Uh, But I think I should be okay. Um, But yeah, playing that game, it feels... I feel more confident in it. Um, And yeah, it is... Like even the trailers that we saw today, right? Like, like there's a flair to them that was missing mm-hmm. in five, and every time I see it, like in um, whenever they show off uh, the character images, small thing, everyone's got their own font. It's not oh, like yeah. just really yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like that. Everyone's got their own little font. Jamie's look different from Guile. Guile looks like very mm-hmm. prim and proper military style, and then like Kimberly's got some. Jury's got like curved edges on her yeah. font, and it's like, oh, they they're introducing personality again. Um, so I'm I'm excited for for this game massively. I, I mean I was bound to be excited as as the Street Fighter person here, um, but yeah I'm I just desperate to play more. Desperate to play more. Um, anything else, uh, Ben? Uh, just pretty much that. Just fighting games and MMOs. Hmm, hmm. What I say is like we do a weekly like um, fight club where I can teach you guys how to play Street Fighter and you can teach me how to play Smash. <laughs> okay. That could be a good exchange. Okay. That could yeah. be a good exchange. Oh, sign me up. Uh, cool. I'm, I'm I'm down to show up and just do whatever. I'm, I just want to play and hang out. Um, I'm gonna talk about what I have been playing next because I, it's a small thing. I have been playing a game called Save Room. Has anyone heard of this? No. Mm-mm. No. Uh, Jake, you should get it on your Steam Deck now that you are okay. on the Steam Deck crew. As should you. Okay. Ben, do you have a Steam Deck? Oh, yeah. Okay, great. So this is a uh, gamer podcast. <laughs> ah, we've made it. We've, <laughs> we've made it. This is, this is a game. So Save Room is a game which I'm going to describe to you, and um, and you're immediately going to want to play it. It is Resident Evil 4's inventory management as a puzzle game. Oh, Excellent. hell yes. <laughs> yeah, I'll okay. that. I'll, okay. I'll check it out. <laughs> Completely it sold is, me. It is literally like... Three dollars on Steam right now. Um, I, I saw literally it, buying I, it. I, I saw it. I took a chance on it. So the Steam Deck, um, it's kind of wonky at times, but not in a way that's unplayable. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it behaves a bit weird now and then, but it's very much doable. I played it for like hour yesterday, um, and it is exactly what it seems like. So you get left side of the screen, you get the attaché case or whatever, or the 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 kind of like the outline Mm -hmm. of what's available square wise or like shape wise and on the right hand side you've get you get a bunch of items and And it's just like figure out how to put that in that and like it starts off being like okay i put the gun here and then i put the egg here (laughs) the egg from (laughs) resident evil and do uh, they just straight up have like egg and guns egg guns uh uh, grenades the usual it's just okay it's just resi assets (laughs) perfect perfect i was i was gonna say i literally just bought it and i'm looking at the steam page for it now it is like you're like oh it's like resident evil 4 it is it is exactly. straight up like <laughs> the rest of the evil okay, perfect. Um, and then and then it starts getting complicated by being like, oh, here's the handgun and the shotgun. And you have to be like, okay, I gotta put this this way, this mm-hmm. this orientation, you can flip it around. And then you realize, oh, 
it will be like, here's the, all these items. Uh, one of these guns is like zero ammo. So you're like, oh, I can. Oh, I have to. Load I have that, to load it. Reload to make it. Room. Put it in, yeah. Yes. <laughs> like get rid of stuff again. And just, you can like yeah, combine wow. items as well. To be like, oh, this is a. I'll combine these two ammo types to create this thing. Mm -hmm. I haven't reached a point where herbs have been introduced yet, but I assume that was there. You can also read item descriptions, so you can inspect <laughs> the thing and be like, oh, a shotgun, <laughs> <laughs> and like, and like you get the whole like as it spins around and comes to the front of the screen, and you can like mess with it and look at the actual character or the item model, and um, it's very chill. It's Resident Evil, um, the item game that we all want to hit, and that's about it. Like it's. You cannot ask for much more than that. But I played it yesterday and I was like, this is delightful. I immediately hit up like, I, th I think uh, uh, Jake Baldino. And I was, because he's a Resident Evil fan, massive fan. I was like, you should play this game. It's very good. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very, very chill and cheap. So I would recommend that to pretty much everyone. If you like Resident Evil. I'm hoping that there's like a little, I'm not sure how much game there is to mm -hmm. it. Because it's $3. I mean. Sure. I, I imagine it's like there's no, it's not a long game, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. Just doing a few puzzles here and there, and like it's got some good features where it's like if you feel like you've gone too far, or you've screwed it up, you can just reset the entire thing. Oh, okay. Um, and then yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, uh, the only thing I'd say is if you're playing it on Steam uh, Deck, you might want to remap some of the buttons because it's kind of weird at times. It mm. thinks that you want to left click, right click when you want to unlock on triggers and stuff like that. So that speeds things up. Um, so that's the that's the main game that I've been playing, which is great. Uh, Jake, you got a couple of things here. Yeah, uh, there was something I was going to talk about, but then I double checked the embargo, and I was like, "Wait, we'll save that for another week." <laughs> uh, but that's okay because uh, I've been playing a lot of Splatoon three. Um, we talked a good amount about it last week. Mm -hmm. uh, more of the same, but I'm cool with that because it's been a while. There's a lot of nice quality of life changes and. Platoon's just, it's fun. It's got good music. It's very colorful. Uh, I love how short the matches are. It was the same thing with the, the previous games where you could hop in for a couple minutes, do a match, and then hop out, uh, buy some buy some cool clothes. Um, yeah, I, I, I've been digging it. I plan on playing more. I think the campaign's also really good. I think... Mm -hmm. I think I'm finding the levels a lot more interesting than they were in 2. Now, to be fair, I don't remember 2 super well, but they seem a lot more creative this time around. Like, there, there's some really fun stuff, like not having any weapons and you have to use your little buddy to get through stages and stuff. Like, that 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 stuff's really cool. I love seeing um, the creative ways they're using those mechanics for, for these levels. Um, it's also, even those levels are really short. It's just nice to pick up, do a couple levels while I'm waiting for something to export or something and then set it down and uh, and, and come back to it later. Hmm. Um, I don't know if we want to talk more about Splatoon 3 because I know you've been I, playing it, but there's yeah. another game I could talk about too. Before we move on, like, are you still playing? Oh yeah, still playing, still having a good time. Um, the I'm, I'm now that it's live i'm greatly enjoying uh all of the like art stuff in the mm. lobbies the the squid kids oh, yeah. are in full effect as many people probably know that game launched the day the queen died and let me tell you Ooh. oh boy that's something that we should also talk about like t tears of a kingdom <laughs> tears of the kingdom that's right <laughs> yeah we'll get into that later yeah, but oh my that's... gosh but yeah the um this the the memes are excellent i also feel like they're a lot hornier this time around and i think it's because uh the kids have grown up i think the kids yeah exactly yeah. it's like i'm watching in real time from splatoon 1 to splatoon 2 to splatoon 3 i'm like oh these kids are older now so they're all like discovering hentai. like you know hentai and g gender identity stuff and yeah. they're just letting everyone know that they love they love women and demon boys and i'm like you know what you good do you, you. Good, good for you kids yeah good job <laughs> Um, I think I'm going to jump into that game soon. Um, I did download it. I just, I don't know if I'm going to stick with it. There was something about the first Splatoon. I played the first one the most mm. that I played, but I didn't really feel the satisfaction of playing it, if you know what I mean. Um, and then two, I tried a bit as well, and I was like, I like the vibe of this. I like the kind of like community yeah. surrounding it, but the playing part of it wasn't working for me. I think I want to give it one more shot before I proclaim myself as anti-Squid Kid. Um and then go from there. But yeah. I think I think if you do it, definitely try the multiplayer, but I think you'd probably appreciate the single player a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Just because it does feel really creative. It does feel like yeah. it, it feels like a Nintendo game. It's just it's yeah. just 
it's, it's very clever, very creative. Uh, it, the boss fights are pretty fun too. Okay. Like I was impressed at how much I enjoyed. I, to be fair, I've only done like two boss fights, but both of them I thought were really cool. Um, I kind of get you with this with the multiplayer though. That mm. as much as I do enjoy it, I, I can't play a whole lot because after a while, there's something about showing back up onto a map that's completely empty, and and I'm just like, I just want to shoot squids and and octolings. I don't want to paint. <laughs> this stage but that's clearly an important part like that's how you win games that's, by painting stages well no well no that's how you do uh you get into the ranked battles because the ranked battles the painting doesn't matter it's um basically oh really uh, it's a payload in the middle that you're trying to fight over so it's way more about um oh, about fighting I try and, that hmm. um if you you have to get to rank 10 to mm-hmm. unlock it but if you imported a splatoon 2 save um that i believe already had it unlocked you will immediately unlock it so you should be able to try it that mode is well, way more just like competitive. Like you're really, yeah. So I I, I would recommend giving that a try. Um, also, Tam, I, I you should definitely saw, play it with us because it's a lot more fun yeah. to play with a group because you can just kind of like bullshit and just like, you know, fuck around on Discord and and you're not taking it too seriously or getting mad at your teammates for not painting properly and getting like really upset yeah. about it. I also saw that the ranked mode doesn't rank you based on wins or lose. It loses, at least not entirely. Part of it's based on uh, how well you do in match, which hmm. I thought was pretty cool because I think we've all been in situations where you've personally played really well, but your team yeah. let you down, and then you get demoted, and mm-hmm. then and then it just spirals from there. So, so I kind of like that approach to ranked. Whether or not it works, I don't know. I, I feel like I haven't seen many games, if any, do that, so... Maybe there's a reason why games don't do it, but um, I'm definitely curious to test that out in Splatoon. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, I think I'm going to jump in soon. Let's talk about this other game, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. What is it, Jake? Uh, it's a little game called Metal Gear Solid Five. Uh, mm. So I played this game <laughs> quite a bit when it came out. <laughs> mm. uh, but I haven't played it since, despite the 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 desire to restart the game from the beginning and 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 re-experience that game the reason i didn't restart it was because as cool as i think that opening is it's not fun to replay in my opinion Hmm. um but i finally pushed through like i tried a couple times and i have not been able to get through that opening but i finally pushed through um that opening so now i'm in the world i'm developing different things i'm listening to some good music while i fulton people out uh that game still just feels so damn good like it is one of the best feeling games i think still to this day uh i i i can just sit there and explore that world like mess with enemies Mm. uh and like i love how the the r&d stuff works and how it just kind of becomes a snowball where you start out you know using your typical metal gear kit more or less but eventually you start getting some ridiculous ways you can mess with these enemies and try out different things like i it's so good. It also like it looks so damn good for being a game that's five years old, seven years old. God, I wish it was five wow. years old. <laughs> I did not realize um, it was that yet, that old. Yeah, yeah, it came out twenty fifteen. Um, but the fact that there's no next gen update is is a crime. And I realize I understand why there's no next gen update. But man, I would the love only for way we're getting a Metal Gear Solid next gen update is if somehow it improves a Yu-Gi-Oh game somewhere. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I'm excited to spend more time and I think I've only played like three or four hours. Um, but, uh, that's kind of going to be my side game for now when I'm not, uh, playing something I need to for work or if I'm not playing Ziv. So that, that game has got the best man breathing while running. In, yeah. in the video gaming history, <laughs> the, the way, way the camera shakes, yeah, 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 and like and the way like you can hear him running, like his his suit like rubbing up against himself, and him going like. <sighs> Sometimes I turn it on just to hear him doing that, <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm very into that uh, snake ASMR. Um, and then you just like pet like D Dog a bit. It's good. I like that. And then you get down, and D Dog gets down on the ground, and then you pull out yeah. binoculars and zoom into D Dog's face. I just see his, Aww. like him panning, like, and he's like, you can see his like whole mouth is like properly animated for his pants. And it's just like, oh, such a good game. Oh, I think so I'm going to play it again. I think I'm going to play it again. <laughs> I, I mean, like I, I play it like every couple months. And I'm just like, oh God, I'm going to do it again. I, as, as 
stupid as this sounds, one of my one of my pet peeves in a lot of games is when characters are speaking a different language from the character I'm playing, and my character doesn't know that language, but I still get subtitles, so I know what they're saying. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I think there's plenty of games that do this, but I love how in Metal Gear Solid Five you actually have to have someone on you, uh, mm-hmm. on mother base who can who can understand Translate. the different languages you come across in order to understand what they're saying like, like it's just those small details that that i love and i and ben really wants to say something so I'm well, i, I can't go. say it because uh, uh, there's just really cool metal gear things going on in my head and you have to trust me because I, I can't talk about <laughs> oh, i i i know i i know part of the like i i've finished that game before so i so i know what's oh. going on but but yeah okay so you, you just okay can i can I just say, am I okay to say yes, it? Yes, you can say it. Yeah, it's been seven everyone years. Has, everyone has played it. It's so cool that in Metal Gear Solid 3, Big Boss can understand Russian, and it is said in the thing, and he can understand it. And then they do it in the thing where he can't understand it in yes. 5. Because it's just, it's, in, it's, it's all there. It's, it's all yeah. leading to it. I love Metal Gear a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the clue, yeah. Oh, that, okay. that was good. That was where I was like, something's up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't like this. Not to spend too much time on that, not to give away any details, but replaying that opening section. That's it so was obvious. Like, oh, how did I not see yeah. this right away? Mm. <laughs> I yeah. remember being like, that voice is the same. It was, uh, hmm, interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's that about? It reminds me <laughs> of, um, do you know how, how like front and center that is? Like, I love it when it's like, it was very obvious something was wrong. Because the same thing happens in Persona 5 with Igor. Remember at the end where it's like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, mm, I didn't although, like connect for me for ages. Although to be fair, the w- they made that work because the original yes, voice actor for was, Igor died. Yeah, yeah, so you yeah. just assumed, oh, they got a new voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it was like actually, and you're like, actually, you're like no, what? <laughs> so cool. Uh, carry on. Uh, what were you gonna say, Ben? Oh, I was just gonna probably say more stuff about Metal Gear that I like a lot. I like. Uh, I like how in the beginning they have the cover of the David Bowie song mm-hmm. to give it away to. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. I also feel really dumb that I was like really hardcore into looking and breaking down the trailers while I was at IGN for that. Uh, and there, I remember literally when one of the trailers came in and I got to sit down and do the, the breakdown for it. And there's a moment in, in the trailer where uh, like after the helicopter blow up happens and ground zeroes, supposedly you're in like the hospital and Ka- Kazuhiro looks over across uh, like an unconscious big boss and is like, oh, hey, what about him to whoever you're looking mm. through his eyes? And that's when I knew. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I it, it was a lesson in maybe cooling down and maybe not going so hard and getting excited about. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but the journey one, was still very good. One thing that uh, I I find interesting to think back on is how mad people were about Ground Zeroes being twenty dollars, even though it was like, quote unquote, an hour long experience. But I remember spending like 15, 20 hours playing that Same. game yeah. just because, like, sure it was a small area with only a couple of missions, but the shit you could do, it was such a great little playground yeah. that gave like such an awesome slice of that game. It, like, it just, just that that conversation in hindsight just seems so uh, so so disingenuous. It's not quite the right word that I'm trying to yeah, go for, mean. but 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 I think yeah, I think you know what I mean. Yeah, I had the same thing where I was like, I don't know, man. I played this for like 20, 30 hours, and I had a great yeah. time with it. So, um, did you guys know, Ben, especially you, that someone is remaking or? updating Metal Gear Solid 2. I saw your your tweet about oh, it. Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Someone's put in the camera from Metal Gear Solid 3 into Metal Gear Solid uh. 2, the subsistence camera, so you can move everything. Like, you get a full free control over the camera, and they're, like, updating <sighs> the control as yeah. well, so you don't have to use the analog stick for the uh, high-frequency blade anymore. You can just, like, tap buttons. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to play that if it does <laughs> not get a cease and desist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but like even in the trailer, like moving the camera around to see things like from different the vamp fight where you can see him like jumping around looks so weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, sure. Oh, I'm not supposed to see that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I I hope that game or that mod or whatever it is that update makes it to completion before it's out in like 
think November or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm 100 percent gonna play that. I might even do a stream of it because you can complete that game in like basically one stream if you do go long enough. Mm-hmm. So oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I did. I think I did two in two streams, but that's because I was like I'm playing like for like three hours at a time. But so maybe I'll do that. Um, yeah, Metal Gear Solid Five, great game, still good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jean Luc. What have you been up to? Uh, I've been playing, or played, Metal Hellsinger, mm-hmm. which uh, should be out now, right? I think it came out over the weekend. Um, I think it's on Game Pass, too. Um, that game's great. I love that game. That game is, is super fun. So for those who don't know, it's basically Doom, uh, like the modern kind of Doom, like Doom Doom 2016, Doom Eternal, but... Um, it is a like metal rhythm game where, uh, if you're familiar with like bullets per second, it's kind of like you shoot to the beat and you have to reload to the beat and do your dodge to the beat. I never played, um, uh, bullets per second, so I can't like comment on how they compare, but, uh, metal Hellsinger like absolutely whips like the, it, it, the combat is like really, really good. Like for one, it's just like the fundamentals of just shooting and like the enemy design and the arena fights are like really, really solid. Like I think it totally stands like toe to toe with um, Doom. The only part where it maybe like kind of falters is that it is a little. Um, the environments are a little like samey or one note where it's like, oh, you, you know, you go and you shoot a bunch of enemies, go to the next area, shoot a bunch of enemies, go to the next area. So you know, it, it maybe like is uh, a little repetitive but i don't you never feel that way because the game is actually very brief you can beat it in like three hours and each level is pretty short within itself you can do it in like 15 minutes um but what makes it work is just like the the flow state you get into with the music is just so good like i you you're just absolutely like when, when, when you're in that state of being, you are just, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like you're, it, you just are like bobbing your head to the mm. music and you're just like going to hit you, going to hit you. And you're like, you just like get into that like weird, like lizard brain state where, where, uh, everything just like clicks about it. And the music is extremely good. Um, it is, all composed by a duo known as two feathers. So the music has a consistency to Mm -hmm. it throughout, but then each song, um, they got a different vocalist from, uh, like a different metal band, um, to do it. The most famous being, um, Serge Tonkian from system of down Mm. who they, um, very, very wisely say for the very end of the game (laughs) because they knew they were like, you knew that's what you were looking for. Uh, and it works really well. There's a, there's a song, I think the, Someone from Trivium are involved as well, so I think so. It's yeah, like a variety of different yeah. metal bands, old and new, and all the songs are really good. Like I immediately started listening to the soundtrack uh, after There's I beat the game. That one with the vocal from the lady that mm. yeah, yeah that's the second level. That one's got the best chorus. Yeah, like you just want to listen to that one over and over. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. So it's like the music is so good, and then like shooting to the music feels incredibly good. Um, and we were talking last week actually about like how I kind of struggle with rhythm games. And I find this to actually not be uh, too challenging on the rhythm side because it's very consistent. Uh, Where, you know, like, I think some other rhythm games, they'll kind of, like, change up the, you know, the the rate Mm. or kind of, like, will switch tempo. Um, This game doesn't do that because I think it would make it kind of impossible to play. Uh, So... um, It is, like, a very consistent beat the entire experience um, and where it differs is that like you have all these different guns that you get and you know how f- much you can like use the guns on the beat changes. So like the shotgun, you can like fire every two beats where like the pistols, you can fire like one every beat. And so you'll get, mm. in, you know, it's like, and, um, you can pick two guns to get, um, for a level. And so, um, basically once you collect all the guns, then it's just like pick the guns that you like the most. You, you don't, there's no like a, it's not like a doom where there's like a combat chest to it where it's like, oh, this gun works better against this enemy. It's really just like, what guns do you find feel the most satisfying to use? So for me, it ended up being 
the shotgun and um, the two pistols, and mm. I just found that to be like like just firing those two pistols like was incredibly satisfying because you just get into this rhythm where it's just like, you know, every beat you're just like bum 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 bum, and then you just switch to the shotgun when enemies get close. Yeah, I I I really can't highly recommend it enough. It's also like I said, it's only three hours. It's very brief. It's like a game you can totally beat in like one setting, um, but it's like a a very 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 good one setting. Like you you will feel incredibly satisfied when you beat that game. Like I was, I didn't feel like, oh, I didn't get my my money's worth or you know whatever. Um, hmm. So yeah, yeah, I think I'm gonna try that game out a bit more. I played the demo a bunch, mm-hmm. and I was very very into that. Ben, are you are you thinking about playing this game? I think I am. Uh, uh, the other thing that, that caught my eye is I think it was them that they were saying they're adding custom song support too. So oh. there's reasons to oh. maybe go back and, and play through those levels with like, I don't know, your favorite S Club songs or. <laughs> that would actually be uh, pretty good. <laughs> the Guilty Gear Strive soundtrack if it's That's a thing you're listening really to. That's really interesting. I didn't oh. know they were going to do that. Mm, I wonder how that would work. Because it could totally work because it's not like the. Um, the the songs and levels are intricately tied in a way where like yeah. you couldn't make it work. Um, I mean, they they clearly have some sort of note mapping kind of yeah. I, the 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 rhythm that's the part where it's like I feel like you'd have to have a certain beat, like 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 if you were to go with too fast, like that would mess you up. Yeah. So I would be curious. I just keep thinking of Audio Surf. Do you remember Audio? Surf? I love Audio oh, Surf. It's- Audio Surf and Beat Hazard were two games that I played entirely too much of. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe like I mean, like Audio Surf is sim- if you replace the shifting with like shock uh, gunfire, mm-hmm. like something along those lines. Like I'm sure they're smart enough to design their way into making it so that any custom song you shove yeah. in there, you can figure it oh, out. I and, played so much Audio Surf. Yeah, um, I had a, a Zune HD because I was that kid <laughs> who had a Zune. Hey, I had a Creative Zen, so... But here's the thing. So the Zune HD had a special Zune-only version of Audio Surf. Oh. And this was oh. there was no other mobile version of it that existed. And it would just... You could play any song you had on your Zune. So I could play anything I wanted. And I would just, like, on lunch, just play a bunch of Audio <laughs> Surf and be like, I'm going to play the Halo soundtrack or I'm going to play, you know, whatever. <laughs> It was great. It was a great version of that game. Jake, you want to check this game out? I plan on checking it out. It mm-hmm. seems it seems pretty cool. Did you play it on Steam Deck at all? Sorry, I was checking something else. If I missed that, but uh, no, I, that's kind of what I want to try it on. Because I didn't actually. I, I kind of meant to, but I forgot. Um, I'm curious how well that would work. I mean, it is on. I assume it's on Xbox as well if it's on Game Pass. So I imagine the controller support is probably fine. For me, I definitely like Doom Eternal and those games. I just like playing them on mouse and keyboard. Oh, um, really? So I would yeah. be curious how that would feel, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm definitely curious. It seems like a good time, and I think the three-hour time is is excellent because yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's so many games I have yet to play this mm-hmm. year, and the end of the year is rapidly approaching. And yeah. knocking out a three-hour game feels pretty good, especially if it's one that I'm hearing is good because then it's like, oh, this is a easy one to, to to put on a list you know totally yeah absolutely uh and i also didn't find it terribly difficult either um if i'm being honest i i played it on like the medium difficulty and mm. i don't think i died once um because i'm a real gamer um no I, I just think it was like i don't know it, it, it struck like a really good balance where i like well it was very satisfying to play wasn't too too demanding maybe in the way like a doom eternal kind of like gets in its later stages like that game gets real freaking hard um even on like normal difficulty but i found i found the game's difficulty to be to be really good and yeah like the length was just absolutely perfect the only thing i didn't really care for was like the story stuff um it's there's basically just like some animated cutscenes uh where i think it's troy baker is like this like talking skull that kind of narrates it and he's got this like southern drawl where he's uh kind of talking about uh everything that's going on and the art looks cool um a reviewer richard wake uh wakeling compared it to like a dio album cover which i think is pretty accurate but i was just kind of like eh, this is i could just kind of skip this and which mm. which you can totally do so if yeah. you like aren't interested in it, it's just like eh, just skip it and just get right to the levels which is really like what you're there for hmm. nice anything else you've got you talked about splatoon but you're also mm. watching something 
watching Cyberpunk Edge Runner. Yeah, which you are, like it, right? I like it a lot. So yeah. I watched two episodes of one. I liked it a lot. Yeah, I like it. I like it a whole whole lot. And I'm, I'm someone who is adamantly very mixed about Cyberpunk as a mm-hmm. game. Uh, there's a lot of things I like about that game. A lot of things I really didn't like about that game, uh, including some elements of the story. But uh, yeah, I I. It's not like the greatest story ever so far. I'm only four episodes in, so maybe it goes in a direction um, one way or the other. But I find the characters to be uh, very fun to watch. Um, there's a lot of there's a really great cast. Um, the leader of the like cyberpunks that the main character David joins is voiced by uh, Kiryu Kazuma himself, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> it's really good. It's a lot of him going nani. Love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> nani. Uh, but yeah, it's like great characters fun setup um it, it's cool to like see that world from like a different character's perspective um and also to like seeing it animated i mean trigger went all out mm-hmm. it looks gorgeous like their use of color and the, some of the animation work is like top top notch like you would yeah. you would think like oh a anime based on like a cyberpunk video game like eh, you could probably phone that in like there's a lot of um animated stuff like that that looks just kind of whatever like there's a there's like a dragon age anime coming out netflix that looks like incredibly mid every trailer i've seen looks super super mid which is disappointing because i love dragon age but everything about it i'm like "Uh." so it's like the high water mark is like a castlevania right where it's like castlevania super good this to me is like a castlevania where it's just like wow they went all out with the animation and then like the story's pretty good Uh, it's a lot of fun super violent like, very horny as well. Very horny and very violent. Uh, but in a way that totally like fits the theme of that universe and, mm. and what they're going for. Um, it feels like a fun fusion of like CD Projekt Red style and Trigger's like crazy out there style. Yeah. There's a couple characters that are very like, ah, yes, you are a, a Studio Trigger character uh, in a great way. <laughs> yeah, I've been feeling that as well. Like I, I think they really leaned into the aesthetic of cyberpunk pretty hard like really 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 hard actually and it almost like amps it up where like the the density and like how how overwhelming the colors in the city is is way higher in in this Mm -hmm. anime series than it is even in the games like you at any one moment the details on screen are like innumerable Mm -hmm. um and i love the that like there's a lot of um kind of like things that you immediately recognize um from the game as well as like the tabletop like you know the trauma yeah. units and certain um adverts advertisements mm-hmm. billboards that you're like oh that's just from the game like that's the same I'm, kind I'm of like i'm pretty sure they use the game world as a reference to draw yeah. the background environments because i'm like i remember that that street city street yeah, and yeah. like that specific bar like i remember doing a quest there and like uh, interesting like yeah you can tell like they were using that as a reference um yeah. Which is cool. And they use the music in the game too. Like some of the original songs that were like on the radio they use in the in the show. But like in a really good way, like where yeah. it like matches the vibe and it doesn't feel like it's just putting it in there to put it in there. Like it serves yeah. a purpose, you know? The interesting thing is like the some of the like the language and the lingo is kind of lost in translation because it goes through like multiple layers where it's like the phrase choom is used a lot in, in the game, mm. obviously. Yes. But like in in when you watch it, if you're watching the the sub, you're like you see it there and you can't hear it. So it's like very weird to yeah not hear the word choom when it's on screen. But then you're like, of course, <laughs> like there's not going to be a Japanese person calling another person a choom. There 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 is a great one where a character uh, was talking about like the police showing up, and I think they just said like the character just says in Japanese like the you know and and CPD mm-hmm. but then the subtitle calls them pig <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like oh I guess like in Japan like <laughs> they don't do that no, no. <laughs> uh, that's amazing but yeah I, I'm two episodes in and I was like I, I was like I'll try the first one and see how it goes and then and if I if I'm into it I'll, I'll, I'll watch a bit more um, and on another day but I watched the first one and immediately it was like I see where this goes. Uh, I'm gonna check out the second mm-hmm. one. Uh, so I carried on watching. Um, yeah, it's it's rare for me to like. I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. I guess I shouldn't have underestimated Trigger, but like, 
of these days, like uh, Netflix is pointing out, like just video game gobble left, right, and yeah. center. So I'm just like, mm. yeah, you, at fate, you could look at it at face value. I would have felt the same way. It was really the trigger part that made me feel confident in it because mm. I feel like they have not put out anything bad I can think of, right? <laughs> I think yeah. their their track record's been pretty good. It's pretty good, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I remember watching the Dragon's Dogma anime and oh boy. <laughs> I was like, "Why is this a thing?" <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that one's pretty bad. It is pretty dire. Like I was like, oh, "God, I, I don't like Dragon's Dogma this much enough yeah. to, to sully my." Or even like outside of anime, like I did not have any interest in watching that Halo show based on just what I've heard from people talk about it. Like I know some people said it wasn't, it was yeah. fine, but like it just didn't. It 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 looked not enough like Halo to me, or was like missing yeah. that thing that made me really like want to see that, or like the Uncharted movie, which came out this year. Uh, if you, if you forgot, does, oh my god, yes. yeah, February, right? Mm-hmm. Holy shit! It's even it on. Bad. It's even on Netflix now, and I was like, oh, yeah. I could watch that, and I was like, mm. or I could just stare at the floor for an hour <laughs> instead and be more entertained. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah. I, I have yet to watch Edge Runners. I'm really excited to jump into it. Um, I've mostly been watching Breaking Bad though, and that's kind of been you know, thing, yeah. taking up my screen watching time. But uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna put it on pause to watch Edge Runners because I, I I don't I don't know a lot about Trigger apart that people like Studio Trigger, but I had like no I don't know I I, I had a curiosity for it, but I didn't mm. think I'd actually enjoy it. Um, but after hearing so many people uh, praise it, I'm, I'm I'm definitely interested in watching yeah. it. It's just kind of a matter of when, although. I'll I should probably watch it soon because I feel like every time I log into Twitter, people are on the verge of spoiling things that happen. Yeah, they're already drawn so. fan yeah, art of the characters. Yeah. It's only yeah. 10 episodes as well, like 20 minutes each. So Yeah, it's a yeah, real it's breezy, pretty quick, yeah. breezy watch. Yeah. I do hope that they, they kick the merchandising kind of like a machine into gear for the anime as well because like i would buy some of those figures or whatever it may be oh yeah um some of the like the get a lucy figure well. yeah the lucy figure looks that would be or cool. uh becca she's a short one. Oh, oh you I'm might have not met her yet oh she's great now. she's got um, she's like this little short um uh woman who's got the like red like cyber eyes but like um, everyone like thinks she's a kid so like they're all like every time they go to a bar oh, like okay. everyone's like you can't come in here and then she's just like tries to shoot everyone and they're like no we need to we need to go this is just reminded me i don't know if this is an actual cyberpunk the game but like a lot of people in that anime series using a device to jerk themselves off did you, <laughs> did you see that yes it's it, not in the game but it, it's not in the video game but that is certainly a thing in the law yeah it's yes. it, i think it's like it's implied awesome. in the video game but like in this they're yeah. just straight up like they have oh, that is a weird thing that is like moving up and yes, down. Yes, you are just straight like, up seeing like. A <laughs> but it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and but like, it started off with in a scenario where someone is like in VR porn. I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That- but then, like in the, a few <laughs> scenes later, there's just a dude sitting on a wall, just out in public with that on, and I was like. What are you doing out there? <laughs> and that's the part where it feels like you have the the established lore of like, oh, that's technically a thing, but like, you know, CD Projekt Red's like, well, we wouldn't go that far to show it, and Trigger's like, oh, we would. <laughs> oh, we'll do it. Like, I was like, oh, yes. Absolutely. The creators of Panty and Stocking? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, Hedgy in the chat says they didn't have the budget to add them to the game, so they put dildos instead. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I, I recommend that highly. It's yeah. I'm excited to check it out more this week. It's really good. I like yeah. it a lot. All right. Um, I think that's everything covered. Mm-hmm. So we're going to move on to a little bit of a discussion about what's been going on from, as, as written here, E3 Fall Edition, <laughs> which is this week. Um, number one, Ubisoft has announced a lot of Assassin's Creed games. Um, we can just go around the room and say, like, what is the thing that we're most excited about? Assassin's Creed wise now, if anything. Um, it, oh, there's it, something I'm very excited for with Assassin's Creed. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. What's, what's, what's that? The Project Hex or whatever with Clint Hawking. Clint Hawking. Oh, uh, yes. Very curious to see what that ends up what being. If I, what, if, what if I reminded you that Clint Hawking was at one point recently working on a VR game? Yeah. He, well, the, so this, this project hex could be the VR game. I mean, that'd be oh, cool. I think so, but that'd be cool though. I, I don't think. So. Mm. 
Mm, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I really hope not. I heard, like, based on the I'm presentation, pretty sure that was it sounded like... I might, be, I might be misremembering it, but I think he was supposed to be working on a VR thing. Maybe I'm maybe. misremembering. But, um, yeah. but, but based on the presentation, it sounded like it'll be very different than Assassin's Creed games, and I just picture, you know, that level design from those old Splinter Cell games updated, refined, and put into, like, an Assassin's Creed setting. Maybe, like, a Hitman flair to it where you can mm. replay those levels, uh, hunt different targets... Uh, I, I, I think something like that would be really cool. That also sounds like it's going to come out in like 2028. So, yeah. you know, mm, yeah. eventually so, it's hard to get excited about anything that far away, but like gun to my head. If someone was like, what's what, what be excited for an Assassin's Creed game? I'd pick that one. <laughs> mm. So I, unless I, it's a VR game, then uh-huh. maybe not. My hope is that it's first person and this is the dishonored for Assassin's Creed franchise. Like, or something like that would be cool I, too. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping mm. it is. Like, use the, it, put Clint Hawking on that kind of um, immersive sim because mm-hmm. the whole hex thing is like magic, voodoo, which is like outsider powers, that kind of thing. And like, first person perspective will be very different from what they've done before. Go a lot darker, um, make it a little spooky. Yeah, and it's supposed to, rumored to take place during the German witch trials as well. So you could do some real cool things with that. Um, yeah, so I, I would love that. Ben, any interest mm-hmm. in anything that you saw there? Uh, I'm also interested in the, the spooky Assassin's Creed. Uh, I'm also interested in why they pronounced it so weird when they were talking about it. Hexe. Hexe. Uh, Hexe. Hexe. Uh, but uh, I guess besides that, to also talk about something else, I'm excited for the multiplayer to come back in some way. Yeah. Uh, because I yeah. like the ship a lot, and it's just the ship, but cool and different. I played a lot of that Brotherhood multiplayer. I really liked it. Oh, yeah. I thought it's it was good really time. good. Um, uh, yeah. Hey, why do they call it Hexa? It might be like a, a um, like this is how it's said in a different language. I, I think that's what it is. Because yeah. it's spelled mm. H-E-X-E, E-X-E, I think. Yeah. But they say Hexa, and I was like, what? Uh, Hexa in German is witch. There you go. Oh, there you go. There you go. That might be a thing. Uh, yeah. I just did a quick search, and that was what popped up. Figured it out. Solved. Um, Jean-Luc, what about you? Honestly, I'm really excited for um, Mirage, Yeah, the one that's coming out, because uh, I really like the idea of, like, the, like, you know, it's kind of a thing every game's doing now, but, like, they're going back to their roots, yeah. right? They're going back to Assassin's Creed 1, um, and I actually, like, it got me excited, and I actually booted up and played a couple hours of Assassin's Creed 1. Oh. Um, there are things about that game that, don't hold up very well um but there are things about that do hold up it's it's a game that i would say is not like um good Uh, it's it's good it's like it's like some aspects about it feel better in a world where like assassin's creed has become so bloated that kind of like going back to like a simpler assassin's creed is good but then you're also like yeah but you know the side missions aren't great and there really isn't much to do outside of this and the cutscenes and the uh, dialogue's actually kind of rough in a lot of spots. Like, Altair's voice acting is quite bad, and and it just sounds like a white dude. He's a, yeah, he's um, an American guy. No? Yeah, yeah. It's like I think they eventually fixed that. Yeah, in like, they, they, uh, they gave revelations. A, yeah, they gave him like an Arab um, accent a little later. But it's like you look at that and you see the potential of like what we've said this before, like what Assassin's Creed could have been, like the direction it could have gone. So I'm very excited at like, okay, like you're making an Assassin's Creed one that's building off of that. Like, what are you going to do with that? And so it's like, you know, um, a nice lean 15 to 20 hour game. They can kind of, you know, I think Assassin's Creed has come a long way in terms of the production values of stories and characters. Uh, So I think they can potentially do that really well. And, And then, yeah, if it's like really focused on, the assassination stuff like there's some cool stuff in assassin's creed one like when you're doing um uh where you're like eavesdropping and you're gathering information before the assassin uh assassination itself you'll get stuff where it's like oh hey uh you learned that um this is a good escape route or here's a Mm. map and what's weird about it is that that stuff then is like kind of doesn't actually really feel all that relevant when you're actually doing the assassination it's like it's like it's there, but when you're doing the assassination, you just kind of do it and, and you're not really actually paying attention to that information you collected. Mm. So if they actually like lean into that stuff and you're gathering information and you're building like a strategy, I think that could be really cool. So I'm just like super excited to see what they yeah. what they do with the game. 
Yeah, I think Mirage is the one that I'm most excited about because when we talked about this a, a few weeks back, remember we had that big old rant about Assassin's Creed? Yeah. The thing that I said was like, I want them to go back to one and mm. do it right and with the learnings of everything that they've done since. And that seems like what they're doing um, with a new character, at least. Um, so, well, not a new character, but, you know, an existing character that um, uh, they're bringing back, Basim. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I definitely want to see more of that game. I'm excited to play it. That's the one that's coming out soonest, I guess, like yeah. next year. Um, I am intrigued by Project Red, I think it's called, or whatever, the Japan one. Yeah. My concern for that one is it's going to be the kind of Assassin's Creed game that we currently have. Yeah, because the they said, one. they did say it's going to be an open world one, and that yeah. to me says, oh, you're going to make it more like Valhalla. Yeah, I don't know if I've, yeah. I would love to. I mean, like, they, they, they make good worlds, so a very mm -hmm. open, very big Japan could be really cool to be in. Sure. But, like, the problem is they fill those worlds with, like, a lot of boring guff. So it's like, I hope they, like, figure out something. Yeah, I, I also think, uh, unfortunately, like, I was really excited about the idea of a Assassin's Creed set in Japan pretty much ever since 2, mm. and I feel like they've kind of took a little too long and now we've had ghost, ghost of tsushima and sekiro, sekiro and, and there's a, like a neo a, a bunch of other games that he, like they announced um what was it like the, the that ronin rise game of the that ronin? Yeah, rise, rise of the, of the ronin, ronin which actually looks really cool yeah mm -hmm. but it's like ooh, okay i get it like feudal japan's real popular right now and mm. i would have been super into that a couple years ago but now i'm starting to feel just like a little bit fatigued so i am excited but i'm like I feel like I'm not as excited as I would have been a couple years ago. Yeah. I feel like the way I'm approaching Assassin's Creed games these days, especially after Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla, is it's like I'm not I don't care about the story. I'm not gonna finish the story. If I do finish the story, I'm gonna have no idea what happened probably because there's just so much bloat and so much random stuff that like I, I, I don't particularly mm -hmm. care about. But I think the reason why I still am always interested in these games is just because I like exploring that world and I really yeah. like the things they do with those worlds. I mean, I'm talking like even some of the mechanical stuff, like when they added the, uh, what was it called? Like historical mode or, or, yeah. or teaching mm. mode or something where you could just go through the world, no combat, and just kind of get more detailed information about that. And to be honest, if if Assassin's Creed Red does end up being this massive bloated uh, Assassin's Creed game with way too much to do and a story that's not all that interesting, I'll probably be okay because I'll just walk around that world, check things out. Uh, you know, I, I, I think with these new Assassin's Creed games, it's just important to be like, hey, I don't need to finish this, you know? I, I can play this until I've had my fill and stop. Like, yeah, I, I think the biggest mistake is going into those games and being like, <laughs> I have to finish this because some people love it. Cool. Myself can't do that. Yeah, I don't think I've finished a single one of the like recent three no. trilogy of RPG ones. I have not. And and I, I kind of like want to at some point because I think some of the DLC stuff that they do is really cool. Uh, but once again, I see that DLC stuff and I'm like, I haven't finished the main game. Don't really want to play that if I haven't. And I'm not going to play the main mm. game. So, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Um, nevertheless, feels like Assassin's Creed's in a more exciting place i agree author. especially mm -hmm. if they yeah. like i don't know if this is their plan but if i would be totally fine if they did like a small game big game cadence like hey here's a mirage and then here's like the big open world one here's your your red and then we're gonna do like another smaller one so like if they kind of go in that rhythm you know where it's like you're gonna give me a bunch of options of different types of assassin's creed games and i can just mm -hmm. play the one that's most interesting to me sounds great yeah right Same. everyone yeah. everyone's satisfied uh, let's move on to the next thing that was announced. Uh, Goldeneye. Oh yes, from the, back. From, from the Nintendo Direct. Yeah, I, I sorry, I put in just a couple things. Um, mm -hmm. Feel free to add anything you no, guys want to talk about. I want to talk about. Cool. Yeah. Um, how do you guys feel about the fact that the online stuff is only on the Switch version? <laughs> Did you hear about that? I love that. I'm very into that. Uh, obviously, Nintendo known for their excellent online infrastructure. <laughs> That's uh, the so thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm excited to see how that comes together. But I'm I'm also kind of glad to see Goldeneye is, is out for people who who are excited about that. I mean, like I would love to do a stream with you guys where we just all sit down and play like in the studio some like split screen. 
Mm-hmm. I think that'd be fun, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's been a while since I've played it. Um, I last time I played it, I was like, yeah, this is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's nostalgic, kind of thing. but it's not fun. Well, that's the uh, thing it, about the the Xbox version is it has like a better frame rate. It, they're giving it like dual analog support, like all these things that are like it will make it a better playing game. But then it doesn't have the online. But yeah. if you play the Switch version, it's basically just an emulated version of the original. So you get like the true experience. But like, do you actually want the true GoldenEye experience where it runs at like well, six frames a second? <laughs> it's also the, the true experience with their not great N64 emulation on top of everything else. Yes. That's um, very true. Yeah. But yeah, I, I wonder how much of the Xbox version is taken from that leaked arcade game that came out like. Mm. like oh, a year yeah. and a half ago so i remember i remember hearing from people how it played uh and it sounded like it was a really good setup um but yeah i, I also like i've got good memories of goldeneye and i feel like i'm i'm far enough out from it where i'm like if i wanted to play goldeneye i could always just play perfect dark a better version of goldeneye mm. but also, if I wanted to play Perfect Dark, I could probably just play Time Splitters, a kind of better version <laughs> of both of those. Uh, what I'm saying is, give me my Time Splitters back. Yeah, what you're saying is, let's play Time Splitters, Future Perfect. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> take me in. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see more of GoldenEye, just so people can just stop talking about it now. <laughs> uh, we talked about Rise of Ronin briefly. Do Does anyone want to dip into more of that? Seems no. cool. No, it just seems cool. Yeah, it seems yeah. cool. Same goes for Street Fighter 6. Yeah, we talked about that. We talked a bit about, a bit about that. Zelda. <laughs> Tears, Tears of the of Kingdom. The kingdom. <laughs> uh, that will never uh, not be funny. <laughs> which uh, <laughs> Is it are, Tears are, or Tears? Well, that's the thing, right? That's the people, thing. People are yeah, debating, yeah, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's probably Tears, but... Around the time when the UK is mourning the death of a monarch, it makes sense that everyone's like, Tears, is it? Makes <laughs> and then sense. Nintendo was like, out of respect, we will not be live streaming. The UK version was not live streaming it. Oh, really? Yeah. No, the, the, yeah. the, the Nintendo UK account specifically said we will not live stream the direct out of respect for, for the loss of the queen. And so everyone in the UK just went, oh, okay, I'll just go to the US YouTube and watch that version. <laughs> like... Not a big deal, but like, yeah, they did that because presumably because it was called Tears of the Kingdom, mm-hmm. or even if not, like, that's still really funny. Uh, J- Japanese name, according to uh, Bob Jones, says it's the crying tears kind. So oh, basically, okay. people have looked at the Japanese version of the name and have been like, okay, mm. this is meant to refer to that. They could very easily pivot that and just like do, oh, it's tears, not tears. Hmm. But I feel like it's too late for that now. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see more of that game. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, my dirty secret is that I never finished um, Breath of the Wild. I didn't either. I was like, That's yeah, cool. this seems. I was like, this seems fine. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> uh, it's very open. Uh, not a lot of direction, and uh, these sh- shrines are boring as fuck. Goodbye. <laughs> That's the thing I really want to see. Is like. How are they going to improve? Yeah, like like dungeons and in like mm. stuff like that because it looks like it's it's uh, the same open world, yeah. Um, but obviously, like things will be different. But because it's the same open world, it's like well, obviously the the mystique of discovering it for the first time isn't there. So instead, you just have to make what's there like way more interesting and compelling. So let's hope so. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Then. I mean, mechanically. I, I was super happy with, with Breath of the Wild. I mean, I, I'm definitely not, you know, in the minority by saying that. I think a lot of people agree with that. Um, but I, I, I do really hope that this one is more dungeon-focused. And, and I did really like the, the, the idea of having, like, bite-sized dungeons in um, uh, shrines in Breath of the Wild. But I hope we get some, like, meatier, more intricate uh, actual dungeons to explore, to use some of those different different tools that like people have proved time and time again that you can do a lot of cool stuff with that and uh yeah i i, I think there's a, there's a lot to be um 
not expected, but there's a lot of, there's a lot to hope for when it comes to that side of the game. Um, mm. Other than that, though, that trailer, I I didn't get much from it apart from a date. I was like, okay, cool, it's coming out. Still mm-hmm. don't know what this game's like really going to be about, what the what the premise is supposed to be. But I guess that's okay. Probably the less I know, the better, because that's a really good Tame Impala song. But also because uh, <laughs> uh, I I just. Like, it's a Zelda game, right? Like, I'm going to play this no matter what. I don't need to know everything that's going to happen. Uh, I, yeah. yeah. Zelda, man. Like, I'm excited. I, it's weird because whenever they do, like, the follow-up to uh, a Zelda game in the same kind of, like, universe, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. always want it to be weird, like Majora's Mask. Like, they set that sure. person, yes. right? Yeah. Like, they do Ocarina, which is like, hey, we've got a Zelda game here. It's cool. And then they go, hey, we've got... A Zelda game which we made on crack, like, <laughs> and I'm like, I want the one that was made on crack, please. Um, like that's that's and based on what I've seen, doesn't seem like there's much there. Like the first trailer was a bit weird and a bit spooky. There's some like weird. The stuff first going trailer on. was probably the most intriguing to me. Yeah, they just they they haven't like it's had dry really- cannon. Yeah, <laughs> where's Dry Cannon? Show him to me again. <laughs> dry Cannon is a great name for him. <laughs> um. Uh, but yeah, they just didn't follow up on that. It was just like, okay, now we're just going to show you some normal Zelda stuff. And the Skyward Sword energy coming off of it is is a bit much for me. Oh, like, with the like, with the, like the yeah. diving and jumping up, which I'm like, okay, this could either be awesome or it could be Skyward Sword. Um, so yeah, I, I'm more optimistic than because because Skyward Sword had that, but it felt very like it didn't feel like you could do much. It was like, okay, now you dive to this specific area where you could walk around on the ground. This seems hopefully a little more open. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm feeling a bit more optimistic. I, I'm, I'm very excited for it. But, but I think one thing I do want to point out while we're here is that uh, I, was, I was very skeptical on the, uh, <laughs> on the, the supposed leaks for, for this direct. Mm-hmm. I said there wouldn't be Metroid Prime uh, trilogy. I was right. I said there probably wouldn't be any Zelda games apart from... Uh, Breath of the Wild too, so I just want to say, you know, like <laughs> I fucking knew it, and and I had no insider information. It was just because I knew fucking Nintendo isn't gonna give the thing that people want. That was all I went off of, and I was right. So, <laughs> <laughs> Zelda, not Zelda, the the Metroid collection has been like just rumored for so many every, so, yeah. every direct like the last eight directs have been it's going to get announced this time whenever anyone says there might be a metroid trilogy i'm like no that's bullshit i'm not believing anything you just said because of that i think it will happen like uh, it will it's it's i believe it when people say it's ready to roll like it's out there yeah. mm-hmm. it's done it's on a nintendo shelf somewhere just waiting to be pushed out um but yeah, so I, I, it will happen eventually, but like, I just, I just don't. As someone who is a massive Metroid fan, I just don't care mm-hmm. to to like speculate every single week, yeah. every every time Nintendo yeah. says they're going to do anything. Yeah, I, I think you're right, though. I, I think it's sitting there. I think it's ready to go. I think they're waiting for the right time. Mm-hmm. I I imagine it'll probably be in line with Metroid Prime Four, uh, just to kind of give people a refresher. Because right, those games came out so long ago. And if this is going to be Metroid Prime 4, people are going to probably wonder what happened before. Um, so I think it'll happen. The, the the big question mark for me, though, coming out of that Direct was what happened to Advance Wars. Yeah. Because um, mm. that was something I was looking forward to, and they delayed it indefinitely because of the war, which, understandable. Um, but I, I, I'm kind of curious on like the state of that like are they just going to be holding it for as long as they need to were they waiting i i I don't know it because we're getting a new call of duty game in a month which i'd argue is probably a little more insensitive uh if you want to take into account things happening in the world than in advanced wars games an advanced war collection but i know nintendo activision you know it's it's very different circumstances but from where i'm sitting it's like i want to play advanced wars Especially if I can play a new Call of Duty game, yeah, a, I, a a contemporary Call of Duty game too, not even like a World War Two one or or mm-hmm. a a Cold War one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get what I mean. All right, final, the the main event in 
Hello Yakuza games. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't know where we want to start. Like, Let's start with uh, Ishin because yeah, they Ishin. announced that during the PlayStation one. Yeah. What's did up? not yeah. did not expect did that. Not, yeah, I did not expect that. Well, actually, let's start with the the big thing. It's not called Yakuza anymore. Yeah, that's. I still don't like. Is it? Is it? It's across just, the board. Yes, Yakuza is done. Yeah, because because they announced eight, and it's just called like, like a, a dragon, dragon eight. eight. Yeah. They are abandoning the name Yakuza. Why? I think it's a. I think it's to try and be in parody with like Japan because in Japan it's always Ryuga been called Gotoku. Ryuga Gotoku, which translates yeah, to like a, dragon. like a dragon. And then in America, when they were like, we got to, you know, that original Yakuza port was like very Americanized. Let's be edgy yeah. and throw in like a bunch of swear yes. words. So they were like, we'll call it Yakuza, right? Like, because yeah. we're trying to like appeal to like the GTA mafia crowd. And so I think they're at a point where they're like, like Yakuza as a name doesn't really fit the series anymore, even though like it is weird because it's yeah. still like that's the name people know about here. And I thought it was cool when for seven, they were like, Oh, we'll call it Yakuza like a dragon because it, yeah. to me, it like thematically made sense. Cause like, Oh, you're like calling back. Um, they were pulling like a resident evil seven where they call it resident evil seven biohazard. Yeah. Um, but then it's like, Oh, you know, it's because Ichiban is like a dragon. He's not he's not Kiryu, he's like he's Kiryu. Like and Kiryu, like there's yeah. a lot of thematic stuff that made a lot of sense there. But I guess they're like using that now as like an excuse to just fully transition away from Yakuza, which is weird. I'm curious if that'll confuse people at all. Yeah, I, I do think go on. I, I don't think so. I, I think they're at a point where like the the fan base is so hardcore and excited for these games. I don't think people are really gonna get confused. I think newcomers might get a little confused, yeah. but I think I I, I I don't think it'll be as much of an issue as as, uh, yeah. as some people might think. But I'm also not as invested in that uh, franchise as you guys are. Although it, it does annoy me now because they dropped the seven from seven in America, and then they're back to yeah. calling eight eight, and yeah. I'm like, ah, no. So that will confuse people because they'll be like, wait, is uh, this, this is a spinoff? And you're like, no, that one's seven. Go. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, the thing is like it. In terms of from a marketing perspective, it definitely limits like the growth potential of the franchise by not calling it Yakuza to a degree. But then this many games in who's really like, now is the time for me to jump on. Like <laughs> it's it's very weird. Like I feel like calling it like a dragon um, as as the main kind of like title is perhaps a it feels like a rebranding or like a mm -hmm. it feels it'll, it'll function and feel like a new ip in, in a lot of ways sure um which is and like the, the worst case in the worst case where there's confusion they look at one previous game which was you know the first ichiban game but they're like oh i just need to play with that one right it's like yeah okay sure and then once they get into it they're like who is this pop star looking guy that is <laughs> hanging out <laughs> um obviously that being the next major thing was like Kiryu is back and, in eight. He, and he looks like a Persona character. <laughs> he looks like the Persona 4 protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I also have mixed feelings about the Kiryu coming back. Um, yeah. I, I love Kiryu. I love my boy. He's great. They were like, they were like he's done. He's out. He's done. And then all of six is, it, it's like this, like we're sending him off in style. Like that yeah. game has this just like feeling of just like this is Kiryu's last game right and then it's like okay we're gonna have him kind of like you know he makes a cameo in seven and it's and it's fun and it's nice um but it very much felt like we're moving on to go back to him being like a dual protagonist in eight feels um it comes across as like hey uh seven didn't sell as yeah. well as the rest we need we need to bring Kiryu back like it, it kind of has that feeling of like slight desperation about it I, at I, least, like, yeah. just, like, looking at it, like, I'm just, like, oh, like, already? Like, especially because also, like, Nagoshi just left, and then they're, like, okay, we need to bring Kiryu back now, right? Yeah, like, I'm yeah. just, like, uh, like, the optics look kind of weird. Yeah, it, it, When did it come out? Isn't it, like, 2024 or something? Uh, uh, like, no, yeah, like it's, it's got a while yet, yeah. Yes, I think yeah, it's yeah. 2024. I mean, like, by then, everyone we'll, yes. yeah. will be desperate. Because uh, Ishin is coming out next February, along with every and other game on the planet. And the then, in between is next year. Yeah, Gaiden's also like in the fall. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. yeah, I was curious. Maybe people will be a little more uh, excited after it's been, <laughs> you know, even longer. Since sure. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Been without him, but I mean, I'm still excited. Obviously, know. like it's 
Yakuza and it's Kiryu you and I'll play the shit also, out of it. Also, like, it does give them an opportunity to kind of go back to the format of Zero, which is, like, perhaps the most well-known and, in a lot of ways, beloved sure. entry in the franchise. Like, because they split that game between Majima and and Kiryu, right? So, like, yeah. now they could do a similar thing with Kiryu and Ichiban. Um, yeah, and I would argue that one does it the best because, like, four and five also had, like, dual protagonists, but, like, five has yeah. five protagonists, and it's too great, many. but it's too many. Yeah. And by the time you get to the fifth guy, the baseball guy, you're like, I don't care. I don't care about, I don't you, care about yeah. you. I'm sorry. I also, like, I'm interested to see how the gameplay, like, they ha- have they said? They so haven't they- gotten too specific, but they did say it's still a JR- an RPG. For, yeah. I, the, yeah. It's for still eight. a JRPG for both, and they both have their individual parties. Yes. So not shared. But there's because that's the part that was interesting to me because in my head because because apparently like seven did not sell as well as the others it sold like half as well as six yeah in my eyes it was probably less to do with Kiryu and more to do with the fact that it switched genres yeah and and so I kind of assumed when I saw Kiryu I'm like oh they're gonna go back to the action oriented stuff but they, it seems like they're still sticking with an RPG system having dual parties is weird I don't know how I'm gonna feel about that from like a pacing perspective where you like yeah. do half of your party and then you switch to a completely different party that you have to separately level up like i'm curious how they're going to handle manage that. the gear of and everything yeah. else my, my my suspicion as to why it sold half as much is because of how that game launched right wasn't it like a series an xbox exclusive for like the first couple months but it was also on ps4 but like people couldn't play it on ps5 wasn't there like a bunch of weird oh oh yeah like yeah dragon, with yeah. how that game like launched. dragon was like, a launch title for the, the, the Xbox, series x and, yes yeah. that's a good and point you know they they push that game pretty hard but probably that that you know it's not that's not the audience right like yeah that's I, also a good point the, yeah. the, that is a like i mean like not to stereotype but like J- jrpgs on the xbox have had a tumultuous past yeah um mm-hmm. especially as exclusive and like the Yakuza fan base is on PlayStation and more so P- to a degree PC now. But I feel like I'm more likely to, if I had to bet like where someone who isn't a PlayStation person is going to play a Yakuza game, I'm more likely to bet on PC than Xbox. Yeah. Although um, they're all on Game Pass. So yeah, at least yeah. like, and I like that, that. Like it's available everywhere, which is cool. Yeah. But yeah, now they are, though. but yeah. they weren't at the time, right? Like you could only do seven and they added like one and two or something. No, but I, th- I think I think by the time seven came out, a good chunk of them were on Game Pass. I, no, I think Jake might have been right. There was a couple of them that would I think like zero was there and um, and uh, Kiwami was there. but they hadn't added three, four. And they five added, they, no, there was it was then there was a break, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then they added like three, four and five. Yeah. Um, so like they were like and they made a big deal of like the entire Yakuza right, franchise right, right. is now available on yeah. Game Pass which is like awesome but yeah um, but yeah so that was the so we got Ishin we got Ishin remake. which is a remake of uh, the original Japan only release uh, it was a launch game for the PS4 um, it's supposedly one of the best Yakuza games is what everyone says and it was my main motivation to learn Japanese. Mm-hmm. So time to go throw all my Japanese textbooks out the window because I don't need them anymore because <laughs> they're now making it. Um, it looks really cool. They're also doing a neat thing where because it takes place in like the late Edo period and it's all like historical figures mm. um, that the Yakuza characters are like playing almost, which is kind of neat. Uh, they're actually in- integrating uh, characters from Zero and seven into this game as well Mm. because those games weren't out when ishin originally came out so um you're getting like the the best one is they're adding all the lieutenants from zero so kuze the best yakuza character is back in ishin and i'm so excited i saw him in the trailer i was like you don't belong here yeah (laughs) yeah they're adding him they're adding a couple of yeah it it looks great i'm very excited for that and then the kiryu spinoff which is supposed to take place between like uh, it's like after six and like what happened during like seven and and leading up to eight i think it's called like a dragon gaiden the man who, who erased, erased his, his name. name yeah yeah <laughs> which i love they don't Incredible call him kiryu either yeah <laughs> they don't call him kiryu in the in the trailer no they call they him like call him like something else like a code name jiren, jiren or something jiren yeah, or yeah jiren, like jiren, jiren or something jiren, weird yeah, which is like Who's this new guy? Ooh, yeah, he, he seems looks interesting. Kind of like Kiryu. Hmm. Who could he be? 
Um, but yeah, I, I love that they're creating the RGGU, the Ryuga Gotoku universe, like connected yeah. universe where it's all like spiraling out of control. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, we've got like a bunch of exciting Yakuza games yeah. coming out. And smaller thing, but like potentially exciting is they uh, announced that they're putting both Judgment games on PC, yeah. which is exciting because... <laughs> Well, mods, but the whole thing was there was that kerfuffle about like, hey, they might not make more Judgment games because... Um, the voice actor? Well, yeah, the voice actor for Yagami, um, his like... Uh, what, what's the term? The Like the people, his agency, yeah, his agency, his agency yeah. were very, they, they're very strict about like what you can and can't be in. And I guess they were like, he is not allowed to be on a game released on the PC probably because of mods i don't it was never officially said this was all like think, kind of like hearsay right i think they cited specifically like being able to like take his clothes off and stuff yeah because i remember <laughs> at least a lot of yakuza people posting pictures like i've already got shirtless yagami in yakuza 7 because people ported and ripped the model yeah people already were like doing that anyway but yeah so a lot of people were like uh oh they might um because sega was like hey pc releases are like a major part of our like staple yeah. now um so people are thinking hey they might end up not making more judgment games um but the fact that they're releasing it on pc is a potentially good sign that all is okay and we might get more, more. get more yagami and kaito which is good because i love those boys mm. and um i i like that rhythm of kind of like you have the kiryu ichiban stuff and then you have the like yagami detective stuff so i hope they get to make another one of those same big same all right. So actually, more, yeah. Go on. What you gonna I was just going to say, I wanted more stuff like the Kaito Files because uh, Kaito Files might be one of my favorite stories in that whole I series. I still need to play that. Yeah, I need to actually, play you that. You absolutely know, do. It's very good. Yeah, I need to play that as well. Um, okay. That covers the major news. We're actually going to bring this podcast to a close now. Um, we're going to skip the question of the week, but we will return to that next time. Fingers crossed. Uh, in the meantime, you can also uh, email us at afterdarkpodcast at gamespot.com or join our Discord where you can answer the question of the week, which is always brought to us by Maria, aka Serious Business, in the Discord chat. Uh, if you want to get into Discord, just DM me uh, or Lucy, and we'll do a quick background check to make sure you're not a weirdo and then um, let you in. In the meantime, uh, Jean-Luc, where can people find you and what you're up to? Uh, you can find me at Twitter at Jean-Luc Seipke. Um I don't know, man. I've just been like doing man, stuff. Doing stuff, man. It's it's been like nonstop live streams and and like preview stuff. Um, I think a lot of that's still going into next week. Yeah. So just keep keep an eye on youtubecom slash gamespot for cool videos. Yeah. Um, Jake, I have nothing exciting to share this week. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Maybe some stuff the though? following week, but okay. not this week. Where can people find you though? Uh, Jacob Deck on Twitter. And Ben. Uh, you can find me, uh, unfortunately, on Twitter.com, at Ben Jenka. <laughs> uh, I don't have anything specific to plug other than just watch all the videos because they're all good. All the, <laughs> all the videos that everyone makes <laughs> are very good here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm at Tomor H. You can read my PSVR 2 preview on the site mm. right now, or yeah. you can check out the video for that. Um, otherwise, we're going to be putting up some stuff soon about various games that are exciting and cool, and you'll be able to watch all of that. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching, and we'll see you again on the next one. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.